Aloha. Welcome to What Now America. It's October the 20th, 2021. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title of the show is Trump says GOP won't vote in 2022 and 2024. Uh, back in 2020 and 2021, there was a special election in a very red state, Georgia, and it was uh, a special election to either determine where the incumbents of David uh, Perdue or Chris Kelly Loeffler would stay as the Republican senators in the state of Georgia. And a, a funny thing happened. They were ousted. They were ousted by John Ossoff and uh, Raphael um, Warnick. And, and what was the reason for that? Well, one, I could say Stacey Abrams had a big play in that. She, she got the vote out. But another curious thing happened, and that was Donald Trump couldn't be quiet about his, his grievance of losing the election. He was going on and on about how the election was stolen from him, how all elections are rigged, and certainly in Georgia. And he said just that, the Georgia election was rigged. So a funny thing happened as well. Uh, Republicans stayed home. They didn't vote. And uh, we had an upset victory in a very red state. And that's what happened. Now we fast forward to uh, Des Moines, Iowa. And Donald Trump's at the podium, basically encouraging uh, people not to vote in 2022 and 2024. Here's this quote. If we, don't, if we don't solve the presidential election fraud of 2020, which we have thoroughly uh, documented, Republicans will not be voting in 2022 or 2024. It is the most single important thing Republicans to do. So if you're part of the Republican leadership and you hear Donald Trump once again, poisoning the waters to uh, discourage voting of Republicans, uh, what, do you say, what do you say to that as he's your standard bearer? So that's the main topic of this show. And I'm gonna go straight to my guests. I wanna welcome Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, and back from assignment, our special Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good, uh, good, um, good morning, everyone. How are you? Morning, Tim. Good morning. Morning. So, Jay, um, if you're Mitch McConnell or McCarthy or any of the the leadership in the Republican Party, and once again you hear Donald Trump crying the blues about the election stolen, the big lie, and how if this is not uh, solved, and if the Republican leadership doesn't follow behind Donald Trump on this particular issue, um, he's basically saying, don't come out and vote. What would you do if you're the Republican leadership on that point? I'd, I'd have him mentally examined is the first thing. Um, <laughs> there are various options here about why he said that. And one of them is that he lo he's lost it. He's, he's so uh, fascinated with, uh, you know, the big lie that he's, um, you know, he's, he, he lies, he lies all the time. And he, he did this um, as, as part of a way to get his constituents to focus on helping him overturn the 2020 election, you know, that that's the first priority for them. They have to get him, get, he has to get them to overturn the election. And I think inherent in that, Tim, Winston, Cynthia, is that uh, he's asking them uh, to be part of the insurrection going forward, to turn it over, um, you know, and that, that means going back to the Capitol and that election. Yes, he's giving him a priority um, they can't worry about the election in 2022 or 2024 because first they have to turn the whole government upside down and make him the president. That's one option. Um, you know, Jay, let me ask you this. Is this a litmus test for loyalty to the dear Donald? Is this what he's really trying to do is to see how tight they are to follow his every word and every command? And um, God forbid anyone should break ranks from him? Could be. I mean... Uh, I mean, what he's saying is you have to follow my primary point, which was that I'm still the president. That's what you have to follow. So I suppose it is. But there are other options here, too. You know, so one is he's he's mentally unstable, which maybe that's part of all of this. Two is, um, you know, that he wants them to have another insurrection and that's high priority. Uh, number three is that he's um, it's it's the reality show again. He's saying something to disturb, disturb and disrupt. Um, and, you know, he wants he wants everybody to pay attention to him. So he makes these ridiculous comments uh, about how, you know, in fact, uh, Republicans won't turn out for the polls. 
Um, you know, it's not true. Uh, they will. <laughs> if, if they show any loyalty to him, who he who is the Republican Party, they will show up to the polls. So um, this, this it's a very odd kind of statement to make, but I think there's a fair possibility that um, you know door number three um, is 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 important. That is, that he, as as through his entire term, um, he wanted to disrupt and distract people with ridiculous and outrageous statements. You know, outrage was a way you deal with the public. Okay, and, and the fourth is um, a dog whistle. It's, uh, you know, I'm kidding when I say this. What I'm really telling you is you have to get out to the polls. I'm, I'm uh, challenging you. I'm provoking you. I want you to get out to the polls. I do not mean what I say. I mean what the dog whistle is telling you. Those are my four possible reactions, my four options about why he said that. But in, notice that in no one of those options did he mean it as a true statement of the reality, because it is not. Okay, thank you. Winston, going to you with the same question, but also adding on, uh, Senator Bill Cassidy, Republican from Louisiana, was in an interview with uh, Axios, and he basically said, there's no saying Donald Trump is going to be the 2024 nominee of the Republican Party. And he said candidly, I, I choose not to vote for him. Uh, pretty bold thing to do for any Republican, particularly a Republican senator. Um, your thoughts about what Donald Trump did in Iowa and um, like Georgia, do you think it will have an adverse impact on voter turnout if he continues with that kind of rhetoric? And then um, your comments about Bill Cassidy standing up to Donald Trump and, and making the statements that he did. Well, he'll either be a sacrificial lamb in it, and they're testing the waters to see how this works, and maybe it'll pop up here and there. But um, uh, and and they're hoping maybe for a game of whack-a-mole that the, that the attention will be localized enough that uh, Donald Trump won't jump on it or have the ability to jump on it. But he's being advised by very strategic people as well that says this is the person you need to attack. These are the points you need to attack. How they're unloyal to you as a leader. Um, I mean, we saw the sort of despicable uh, 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 comments on Colin Powell immediately after his death. Uh, whether, and Colin Powell, uh, you know, he, he talked about him being the rhino or whatever. I, it, it was just sad to see. Yeah, I have that you know, quote. We'll talk about it later. But it was sad. It was pathetic. <clears throat> but it let me add sad, this, though. Going back to the comments I made a minute ago, it caught him attention. Uh, Again. He wants attention and he wants, uh, you know, to uh, distract and uh, disjoint and disturb everyone. Uh, and that's what he did for his entire term, attacking it people is. like McCain and then all that, attacking the, yes. you know, the widow of a, of a fallen soldier. <clears throat> Outrageous things is what he gets off on. True. Uh, Very true. He, 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 he doesn't have Twitter anymore. So, newspaper. yeah. But Twitter, yeah, he, but he doesn't need Twitter and Facebook because the media is putting him out there for that. I remember when he called the, the veterans in, in World War One cemeteries losers, uh, you know, and he doesn't want didn't want to. I, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The it's sort of just like this is a reminder of the daily onslaught of the in, incredible things that Donald Trump had said and subjected us to over not four years, but four years by the 15 minute or 10 minute or increment or unless it was a Twitter storm and then we had 60 tweets a minute or whatever it was. Um, you know, I think what we're looking at here is that he does like to be out in front of the media. He doesn't care what he says. He has no effective filter at all. Um, I don't think he was trying to really, I don't think he cared one way about Colin Powell. Um, and Colin Powell, when he was talking about, oh, he led us into these wars, Colin Powell was the first one that said this was the you know, the big mistake of my life. I owned up to it. When did Donald Trump own up to any mistake he's ever made about anything ever in his entire life? Um, you know, so that people are entitled to, um, uh, I suppose, you know, quiet opinions about things, but not the day, the person, not the hour that the news of the person's death is released. I was just found that really shocking and abhorrent. Behavior. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was. Uh, in any it event, was. I, you know, the, the thing is, that I was more troubling is the Quinnipiac University uh, national poll that came out that said Republicans by a 78% to 16% margin want Donald Trump to mount a White House bid in 2024. 
That's incredible. 78% of Republicans. Now, this is Quinnipiac, a little bit, right, I think, but um, not that much. I, I, yeah. I imagine this is. No, I, I think everyone is shocked by that percentage. And um, given what Donald Trump has been and has done, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely shocking. Well, the, the 94% of Democrats, what are the other 6% there? Do they just want him in because he will be seen as so, you know, abhorrent by then that, they'll, that, that it doesn't matter they could run Mr. Potato Head against him? I, I don't know. And 58% of independents said he should sit out at the election. So I'm not sure what um, Mitch McConnell's game is in on this because as CNN blurred out with their headline, he sends a very clear message that I didn't think it was a very clear message. I thought it was just milk toast that we should focus on the future and blah, blah, blah. I was just like, <laughs> I don't know what Mitch McConnell's really thinking here, honestly. Um, well, he dodged I, the question. By talking about the future, he's dodging the past. And that's all it was. At, but he's also looking at this poll that's saying his, he, I don't know what his percentage of approval is, but Donald Trump's still 78% of Republicans, which, you know, uh, is want him to run against. So this is um, either it's a mass amnesia or it's part of the, I, I really don't know what it is, but um, just that number is enough to make us just sit up. It, it's like having uh, ammonia put under your nose or something, you know, uh, yeah. smelling salts. Good point. So, okay, thanks, Winston. Uh, Cynthia, uh, Winston brings out a great point about the seventy-eight percent um, desire Republicans to see him run again. Again, if if you're the Republican leadership that can't deny those numbers, uh, yet at the same time you see your standard bearer uh, saying crazy things about don't vote in twenty twenty two and twenty twenty four unless you follow me to the edge of the cliff and over the cliff on the big lie that the election was stolen from them. What do you do if you're a Republican leader? Same question I asked today. Well, <clears throat> there's not a lot that you can do, but I don't think he's doing that as a way of trying to say, don't vote. He, <clears throat> he said that in the Georgia race also, because that way, when he loses, he can say, well, see, they didn't come out. That's why I lost because the Republicans didn't show up. But and I he, he encouraged them not to come in Georgia. He said, it's rigged, it's election. It's, it's completely false, you're wasting your time. Yeah, but that's what he's saying again, too. If you don't, if you don't you know, back my big lie, just don't bother to vote. It's a bunch of um, nonsense. It's all about projection and it's a way of covering, I didn't really lose, see? Because right. if everybody really come out, then I would have won. So I think okay. that's part of it. You know? And there's something, though, that I think is important that's going on right now. Um, and it is uh, there was an article in Independent that um, is from that it's talking about uh, in a new interview with the Washington Examiner, uh, David Drucker, for his new book in Trump's shadow, the battle for 2024 and the future of the GOP. That ought to be an interesting um book to try to swallow. But um, at any rate, in this um, interview, he claims that he was surprised by the assault on Capitol Hill that was committed by his supporters and adds that he would have stopped the mob had the Secret Service only let him attend the scene in person. <laughs> that was pretty... Um, uh, I thought that was pretty telling. Is it, I'm sorry, I missed that. Is this a quote from Donald Trump? It is a quote from Donald Trump saying that he was surprised by the assault on Capitol Hill and that was committed by his supporters and added that he would have stopped the mob had the Secret Service only let him attend the scene in person. You know, you got, you got yourself a news flash there because I haven't seen that on other networks, but it's comical. That's, that's hilarious. That's, well, that's something for the Daily on, Show. I'm not buying that book. I'm not buying that book. Hey, uh, <laughs> Cynthia, why, you're still on the line here with me. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's talk about Liz Cheney and her clear, blunt, pointed words to her fellow Republicans about um, the folly of following Donald Trump on the big lie. Uh, would you like to comment on that for a minute? I would. I, I personally have just the highest um, admiration and respect for Liz Cheney for... Um, standing up to the bullies, so to speak, and to, you know, 
uh, just for speaking truth to power and to standing by her principles as opposed to just going for the power and the glory and going along with the crowd. Um, she said, Mr. Bannon and Mr. Trump's privileged arguments do appear to reveal one thing, however. They suggest that President Trump was personally involved in the planning and execution of January 6th. And we will get to the bottom of that, Cheney added. And I thought, you go get him, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I think, um, yeah, it was, it was a, a, a breath of fresh air to see her come out with those comments. Jay, did you have any reaction to Liz Cheney and what she said? Yeah, I think she, she spoke for all of us in a way. And I, I could even put aside the fact that she's a conservative Republican for a moment. Um, but in terms of her participation, the committee is ex exemplary. And she is one of the personalities who's driving that committee. And good for her. Um, I, I hope she stays on it. Uh, I hope she stays influential. And I hope she stays influential with the public. Uh, it's all good as far as I'm concerned with her. Okay, well, you, let's tie that into the context of why she spoke in the first place, and that was the, the subpoena that's been issued to uh, Bannon and his refusal to accept it. And uh, now we have a, a criminal referral from the uh, select committee that now has been voted or will be voted, I think, today on the entire uh, House of Representatives. Um, is Bannon just trying to play the, the role of the martyr, or um, does he have some other scheme up his, up his, up his sleeve? He's an extension of Trump. You know, just, just, just peel off uh, the, the, that bearded face and what you get is Trump. Trump is telling him what to do stroke by stroke. Um, so that's why he's doing it. And Trump is, is also saying, don't worry. You know, he can kick the ball down the road, the can down the road so far and so long that you, you don't have any real risk. We'll kick it all the way to the Supreme Court. You'll never go to jail. Um, and thank you for helping me just as I helped you in the pardon. Um, so I, you know, I see him as an extension of Trump and he's doing what Trump would do in his shoes. And it's not, it's disgusting is what it is, of course. Well, it, it, you know, in recent news reports, it's, it's showing that Bannon was actually part of a, some kind of pre-planning on January 5th. I forget the name of the hotel across the street, but he the and Willard, a number of- The Willard, yeah. The Willard, yes, thank you. The, the Willard Hotel. Um, showing that there's a really very good reason to subpoena Bannon and his knowledge about what took place at the Willard Hotel and what conversations took place and to what degree planning of the insurrection was about ready to happen. Now, we probably have all heard or seen on TV um, Bannon's podcast of what he was saying to his listeners on January the 5th. And that was basically, watch out, hang on, and this is going to be wild. And you know, the, the revolution starts and that's where you want to be tomorrow. Um, yeah, Liz Cheney goes through that. She goes through that and much more to, to say that the remarks that he's made about the, you know, the events just prior to the insurrection uh, indicate that he was in on it. And I don't think any reasonable person could argue with that. It's very clear that he was in on it. He becomes a very important witness. And, and for that reason, Tim, to go to a point you inferred and and that is, well, he doesn't want to show up and have to talk about that um, because um, he will be incriminating himself or there'll have to be, you know, the whole negotiation of immunity and, and um, you know, uh, enforce him under contempt, uh, again, uh, to talk to uh, the members of the committee. So that'll be a, a bad moment for him. And you know that Liz Cheney will be all over him about it. But the question, I think, legally right now is, does he have to show up at all? And um, and he says no, uh, that he has uh, he enjoys uh, through Trump some sort of absolute privilege, even to not show up. And that's that's really poppycock. Uh, he's never going to get to first base in any court, including our um, in, including our wrong way Corrigan Supreme Court. Uh, he's not going to get to first base on that. So, yeah. the um, you know, the question is, does he have to show up? And the answer is he will have to show up. And the practical solution for him and Trump is to kick it down the road as long as they can. At the end of the day, though, as and when he does show up, hopefully before Election Day in 2022, um, he's going to have some hard questions to answer. And the play is going to be on what he does 
when they ask him questions that might incriminate himself as a, an active member, um, a, a fomenter of the insurrection, a, a person who organized it and conspired about it in the essential conspiracy. Um, that's pretty risky. Do, do you see criminal charges death. coming? Do you see criminal charges coming his way, Jay? Yeah, I mean, beside the fact that he blew off the subpoena, forget that for a minute. Right. Let's talk about his participation in the conspiracy. I mean, absolutely. I see very serious criminal charges coming down. And I think that may be part of his, uh, his reasoning here, um, that, that, um, you know, he, that he's, he's greatly uh, vulnerable to those charges of conspiracy, insurrection, what have you. Um, the problem is that if Trump ever gets elected, Trump will pardon him again. Right. You know, Winston, uh, well, hang on here. I'm still writing down poppycock. Um, I see Jay has used a word that I haven't heard in decades. Uh, <laughs> to you, Winston, and that is um, what's really at stake here for Congress uh, if they let Bannon slide on this uh, request for, well, not request, demand for subpoena, and he blows it off. Uh, is it something that the select committee is going to pursue? And is the credibility of the House of Representatives as providing oversight in the future for all things, is that at stake? And is there credibility at stake? Yes, and yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> we're looking at uh, an institution that needs to be able to gather facts to, um, to run the nation. And this is part of their, their um, obligations, part of their duties. And when they're thwarted in that, um, it, it thwarts the whole democratic process. Obviously, this will be seen as a partisan play, even if you have Liz Cheney on the side. Will anything happen? Is Merrick Garland's Department of Justice going to do anything? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe there's something coming down the pike. Do, is Steve Bannon going to get up there and said, I, I, I fomented an insurrection against the United States? Probably not. Um, he's probably going to say we were, uh, you know, if I was involved in, in anything, it was just supporting um, our great leader um, who felt that this was uh, a stolen election or whatever. It, it, I don't think it's just going to be theater in the end that's not going to be good. And I thought, uh, you know, Danny DeGrazia, I think that's his, the way you pronounce his name. He had a, a, an article in Civil Beat on the 18th of this month called Hawaii's Broken Political System is the Real Emergency. And I think what he's what he wrote about there, I just thought that's writ small of our of our national um uh, 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 situation, although he didn't talk about the courts here specifically, but I, and uh, I think that that, that plays into it as well is that you have this, um, you know, sort of three ring circus at it, as it is, and that people's trust and faith in the institutions, that's the real danger here is that they have, they don't have the power. They have their active, uh, leader saying, ignore this sideline it. I'm your true president anyway. Um, and, and so it's no wonder that people are, are confused and misled. And as we're talking, and I'm thinking about that Quinnipiac number uh, again, and thinking, so, uh, and, and by the way, just to finish up on the, on the, on the legislative, um, you know, the, 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 the committee investigating this, they're going to have to go to emails and, and, and that sort of thing to get any truth. But even then, they may be stymied for years, but they'll be able to get, they'll be able to put together some sort of report that's very, um, uh, absolutely incriminating. But will it be read? Will it be cared for? Well, I want to go to that point, because if, if Bannon stretches this out, and I don't know how long it'll take Attorney General Merrick Garland to respond to the House's uh, re referral, um, can you produce a report with really not having uh, the key players uh, testify? Exactly. And, and, and how many, what's the, the Democrats have like eight, eight surplus Democrats in the house. A lot of them are in vulnerable seats in, in the Watergate era. Remember it was, it was the president's own party going after him. And that was what the clincher was this one. There's zero of that. So, uh, I don't know that we can expect a lot out of it. I don't think was, maybe someone will get indicted somewhere for something. But um, how many people went to prison in Watergate? Uh, the, the idea is that our system is predicated on the threat, on, on, on not the threat, the promise of good faith in government and citizens. We've, we have a healthy distrust of, of government in this nation, um, but it, we also rely on citizens um, trusting in the government 
as well. And that when the government says, okay, you need to all get a polio vaccine, uh, then people lined up to take it. These days you have people, they don't, I, I'm surprised people even stop at stop signs anymore because uh, they, it's, it's become everyone's a law unto himself. Well, they're a suggestion, not a, not a law. It's a Can suggestion. Can I jump well, in on this? this point, it Can is. I jump in this for a minute? That's, yes. what, that's what's scary here is that we're really losing basic faith in our in our institutions across the board. It's not just government, but it's especially government because when we don't trust or believe, then that makes it also uh, the government react in a certain way as well of how they deal with the population. And so it becomes less and less democratic, less free, less open because every piece of information they use, they give will be twisted or concerned. Yeah. And it brought me to a, a, a thought and I, I, I brought it up before is that we need to really go back and try and understand what are these 78% of Republicans thinking that they would still support Donald Trump after all good point i've been through and good we point. really really need to go through do a deep dive strip off all of our preconceptions and say what are the are there real grievances here that are uh, it may and, 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 may and maybe a poll question isn't getting to what you're suggesting we need I agree. a deep dive to understand that <laughs> right. so that we can address that whatever mm -hmm. it is and maybe it's a, just a general distrust in government and say okay how do we address this stripped of Donald Trump, um, he may be the messenger of all of this, but we need to say, how do we get these folks back on board so that they're not not voting? We want people to vote. We want a principled conservative party in this country. We may not agree with them all the time, but we need principled players that are invested in the system. And th so we do really need to go back and look at this rather than just dismissing yeah. it out of hand. And it's the same. Uh, same All right. I, I want to get to Cynthia on this before we conclude our show today. But Jay, you said you wanted to interject something real quick. Yeah, I want to go back to your question. Um, and um, uh, gee, it's been so long since you asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, but I, I think I think uh, we, we are operating on the assumption that at the end of the day, we want to see this committee hang some people. We want to see we want to see a quote accountability, end quote. But Trump is going to do everything he can to prevent us from getting there. And bottom line is the committee can only do what the committee can do. If the Supreme Court does a rule in time, OK, OK. Um, what the committee should do is with Mueller, you know, who in his um, you know, later, later years, he wound up with dementia. Um, Mueller didn't do. He didn't really report on the difficulties he had. He didn't report on the obstruction that he had with regard to his own investigation. And if I were running the committee and I ran into these kinds of things, I would say, look, this is what we got in the documents. This is the testimony we got from others. That's what I'm reporting on. Um, and I can make my recommendation that go this way, that way, the other way. But I can't control the ultimate result. I can't control the attorney general. I can't control the president. <clears throat> I'm just telling you what I learned. Yeah. And, no, and you I did think not. We, we should not be expecting more than that from them. Yeah. Okay. Cynthia, um, what's your opinion about Bannon and his role in all this and his reluctance to submit to a subpoena? And what, what does that get him? And do you also think that maybe he could be criminally charged in the future? I absolutely believe that he can be. Um, I hope that he will be. Um, I think that it's all about a stall technique. It's his MO to drag their feet drag it out as long as they can. You can imagine they're probably gonna try and drag it out till the 22 election so that that way, none of this will be decided yet. And right now, among the Republican party, 66% of the people think that what happened on January 6th was not an insurrection, was not a riot, and that nothing bad happened. 66%, I saw, um, uh, another poll but you know so we we only have to look to that so that the big lie is still believed by that many people if they just keep getting fed lies we're never going to be able to pull those republicans back from the brink because they're going to be too buried in lies and we'll never get them back and that's what i'm afraid of more than than anything you know and there's so many of them and i don't know if you guys saw the clips from Jim Jordan when he was um, being questioned by the committee and he suddenly can't remember how many times he talked to 
to <laughs> to Trump on the day of oh what was it before or was it after and he's already been he's already told a, you know a reporter that he talked to him before and during and then then he changed his whole story to being after so it's like they're all just going to lie well they have to be careful because there's something called perjury before congress and maybe he needs to be aware of that 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 little rule <laughs> yes absolutely and especially when and i can't remember which senator or which representative, I can't remember which one of them was questioning him when they just nailed him to the wall. Like, okay, so was it before or was it after? And he goes, uh, uh, after, after. And he said, well, then you mean when you told the reporter, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, I guess it was, um, I guess it was during and after, you know, I talked to him all the time. And it was like, no, no, we're going to nail you down on exactly when it was. And they didn't let him squirm out of it. I didn't get to see the whole yeah. finishing um, the little episode that they had with him. But um, at any rate, boy, they were not letting him squirm very good. That's well, and I guess that's the question, whether or not they'll let Bannon squirm. And um, yeah. your prediction about whether Bannon squirms out of this or not? Oh, I don't have a prediction. I know that my prediction is this. He will get in front of Congress whenever he does end up getting there, and he will lie through his teeth. To okay. Save his own, and to save Trump's neck, and oh. and and to save his own power. So I don't trust any of them to tell the truth by any stretch. <laughs> okay, you get the last word on this topic, uh, Cynthia. We've run out of time, so I'd like to get your last comments. Uh, what you think is okay. going to happen here in the coming week, or? or on this subject, go ahead. Oh, wow. Um, in this coming week, instead of on this subject, how about- in Either, either or, week? Take it's a potpourri of, I, of decisions here. <laughs> bills. I want voting bills. I know that just yesterday or this today or whenever it was the, this last, when they went to go through the Senate with the voting bill and it of course didn't go anywhere because not one single Republican signed on with it. But I think that if, if Congress doesn't get extremely, extremely dialed in and focused on voting rights, it doesn't matter what our, um, our infrastructure is. It doesn't matter if we get the January 6th commission all the way through. If we don't have voting rights, we have nothing. And so that's my biggest thing, voting rights. Okay. Yeah. Um, well placed. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you for your comments. Jay, your last thoughts for, um, for the show and, and for the week coming. Yeah, she's right. Voting rights is very important. But even with the voting rights bill, we still have a, a lot of mm, problems that are going to happen next couple of elections, 22 and 24. Um, and that it's going to be um, more of the same slow rolling uh, insurrection. Uh, never forget what Carl Bernstein said, I, I would repeat it at every show. And we are in a slow moving insurrection, a civil war. Um, there's no turning back. We're going slowly over the cliff. Um, and yeah. all of this uh, falls second to that. Uh, I don't know, and neither does Carl Bernstein, what you do in order to prevent the fall, but we are in a fall now. Okay, thank you, Jay. Winston, your last thoughts? Let's focus on that. What Cynthia said about the 68% said it wasn't an insurrection, the 78%, 74, whatever it was that want Donald Trump to be president again. Those same people, um, those uh, are our country, our countrymen and countrywomen, and they are supporting him for some reason, even uh, whether they think he got elected or not, the big lie. Before that, they're still supporting him. After that, they're still supporting him. We need to understand what that is, deconstruct it so that we can address it and uh, hopefully uh, turn this ship. Uh, I think I, I remain optimistic and hopefully the, 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 we'll get some uh, chicken in every pot as it were with these stimulus bills being passed or rebuild America, building back better, whatever they're gonna call it. Uh, it looks like they're gonna come to some agreement and that's where we really need to focus. Instead, I, I know Donald Trump is an amazingly uh, um, attractive distraction and he's grabbed our attention again and we need to go back and say well, the country needs to be rebuilt we have to do it we have to focus on that and it's so easy for him to derail us all righty 
Well, we've run out of time, but I want to thank everyone, Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair for your wise and sage comments. That's the nice thing about Think Tech Hawaii is that we, we talk about the tough subjects, the tough topics, and we get a great response. We get great opinions and perspectives. And so remember that in October for the fund drive that's taking place right now. Um, click on Think Tech Hawaii and, and donate. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you for watching us. Join us next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host for What Now America. Aloha. <laughs>